The host of the state propaganda channel, Russia24, blurted out on camera about the crime of the Russian armed forces in Ukraine. Speaking about the offensive in the Kurokovsk direction, the presenter spoke quite frankly about the favorite tactic of the Russian army, which consists of raising the cities and villages of Ukraine to dust. And here is footage from the South Donetsk front. The crews of the Tulip mortar destroyed another populated area, the propagandist declared cheerfully. Realizing that he had said something wrong, the RF presenter froze for a few seconds with a frightened face, after which he tried to correct himself. He specified that the Ukrainian armed forces point had been destroyed. Recall, for the millions of people affected by the conflict, it has been 2.7 years of immense suffering, in particular for those belonging to vulnerable groups such as women, children, older persons, and persons with disabilities. The conflict has also had a devastating impact on men, given that those eligible for military service are forbidden from leaving the country. The conflict in Ukraine dates back to 2014 when Russia annexed Crimea. This led to tensions and eventual conflicts in the Ukrainian regions of Donetsk and Luhansk, where pro-Russian armed groups have sought control. On the 24th of February 2022, Russia launched a full land, sea and air invasion of Ukraine. Russia's invasion was in violation of the territorial integrity and sovereignty of Ukraine and the UN Charter, which prohibits such acts. As the conflict continues in Ukraine's east and south, where fighting on the front lines remains intense, with a significant increase in Russian attacks. In areas under their control, the Russian armed forces have been accused of willful killing, summary executions, rape and other forms of sexual violence, the use of torture in a widespread and systematic way in detention facilities, as well as unlawful transfer and or deportation of Ukrainian children to Russia or areas under their control in Ukraine. Incidents of torture and ill treatment against Russian soldiers and prisoners of war by Ukrainian forces have also been reported. International human rights law forbid murder and summary executions and require the humane treatment of persons in the power of the enemy. All acts of torture, rape and other forms of sexual violence against women and girls, as well as men and boys, are prohibited. In the perspective of the future, Russia will be able to attack NATO countries because it has focused on the military economy. This was stated by German Defense Minister Boris Pistorius in the Bundestag. The security situation remains very serious for the foreseeable future. We must assume that the Russian army will grow by more than 30% to 1.5 million soldiers in 2026. Russia has focused on its military economy and will probably be able to train its army to the point where it is capable of attacking NATO territory in a few years, he warned. With this in mind, Germany is doing everything it can to strengthen the country's defense capabilities and continue to support Ukraine in the fight against the aggressor now. As early as this year, Germany will hand over to Kyiv, for example, four Iris-T systems and five more Gepard SAUs, most of the 12 Panzer Hobbits 2000 howitzers promised last week, combat drones, several thousand artillery and tank ammunition, up to 40 Leopard 1A5 tanks and 20 Marder armored infantry fighting vehicles, Pistoria said. However, Germany itself is also in need of investment in defense and the army. Although the army is now better prepared for the need to react quickly to any threat, the list of needs of the German army remains long. As a result of the threat from Russia, Germany plans to allocate more than 75 million euros to the country's defense and security needs next year. For the first time, more than 2% of the country's GDP has been allocated specifically for defense, but this figure will also increase in the future call. Recently, Russian President Vladimir Putin threatened NATO with war after the inherently threatening comments issued by Vladimir Putin and the Russian minister, another ally of the president, has added to what appears to be a coordinated series of statements from the senior Kremlin figures. The chairman of Russia's state Duma, the lower house of parliament, this morning accused NATO of being a party to military action in Ukraine, suggesting it was already heavily involved in military decision-making. Vyacheslav Volodin, a close ally of Putin, accused the US-led military alliance of helping Ukraine choose which Russian cities to target, of agreeing specific military action and of giving Kyiv orders. They are waging war with our country, Volodin wrote on his Telegram channel.